Hi Scalers, on this LinkedIn Sales Navigator Lead Generation Masterclass, I'm going to show you a real-time example that highlights four essential elements to teach you how to generate leads with LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Number one, we're going to look into the details of how to find the best leads possible for your business. Secondly, I'm going to show you how to save your searches so you don't have to redo them over and over again. Thirdly, I will show you how to find reasons on LinkedIn Sales Navigator to engage with your prospects so that you can actually get a positive response. And lastly, because you'll be searching for a lot of leads over the course of the next weeks, months, or even years, I will show you how you can export your searchers into a CSV that includes all of their details, as well as some of their professional emails, as well as phone numbers. This is going to be particularly helpful if you're doing any level of LinkedIn automation, cold email, as well as cold call. So let's dive right into it now. When you land on the LinkedIn Sales Navigator homepage, you have two main ways to find leads on this platform. So first, you can look into lead filters, which correspond basically to searching for individuals, and you also have account filters. This corresponds rather to searching for companies. So you can search for companies first and then find people, which I'll show you later on in this video as well. So let's start with lead filters. You can see there's quite a wide variety of uh, filters that you can choose from, company-based filters, even though that's on the individual parts, so you can see what, in what company they currently work in, what is the headcount of the company, what past company they worked in as well, the headquarter location of their current business, which is different from the geography of the person. So for example, the location of the headquarter could be in the US, but the individual could be working out from Canada. You have also role-related filters. The function one here, for example, corresponds to more general buckets. For instance, people working in accounting in general could be finance managers as well, business development could be sales, account managers, and so on. You can choose by title to be more specific. I usually recommend using title preferably over a function, but you can also use function to search for titles that you may have not thought about before and then use them on the title filter here. The seniority level, whether they are entry level, a vice president, CXO, meaning a CEO, COO, CFO, and so on. You can replace the X with whatever letter you want. Uh, the seniority level uh, is one thing but you can also look into the past job title if they have evolved in the company so how many years they spent in a current position but also how many years they spent in a current company you also have personal related filters as i said the geography which is different than the headquarter location of their business the industry and this is one of the primary filters that you will be using knowing what you target first name last names the language of their profile on linkedin how many years of experience what groups they're also part of on linkedin so you can find matches with your own interests and also the university or school in general that they've attended you also have here on the top right corner the buyer intent. This is very interesting. So you can see if an individual is currently following your company, but you also can see if they have viewed your profile recently. This is particularly helpful if you've already engaged with someone and see if they have looked into your profile as well to use that as a trigger. Best path in corresponds to how you're connected to the individual, for instance, whether you're a first degree connection, second degree, third degree, or else. You can see if they're a connection of somebody you know, could be your manager, your team member, but also a competitor. And also if you've worked in a previous company together or have a shared experience, so you've worked at the same company, but not necessarily at the same time. You can also see some of their recent activities, whether they've recently changed jobs, or if they've posted on LinkedIn, they've been mentioned on news. So quite a lot that you can use. Here, the workflow part is more advanced. So this is something that I'd recommend looking into once you have already started using Sales Navigator more extensively, because you can connect it to your CRM, you can build personas. So these are buckets of types of targets that you have, basically your ICP, ideal customer profile, but also account list. We'll look into some of these later on. But let's get with the first example so I can show you how you can really use LinkedIn Sales Navigator to your benefit. So let's assume we're looking for US-based CTOs who work in a particular industry as well as particular company size. If I click here on company headcount, I can see that I can select anywhere from self-employed up to 10,000 plus. I will say I'm selecting 501 to 1,000. And as I do, it tells me how many people there are in any given bucket. But it also tells me for the bucket I've selected, how many leads it found. I can add them up. So for instance, if I add up, let's say uh, 1,000 to 5,000, it will add them up and it says, okay, there's 98 million results. I'll just deselect it for the sake of this example and move on to role-based filters. So the function filter, as I'm looking for CTOs, it's not precise enough because it will just tell me who is working in information technology, engineering, or else. This is a good indicator of what other titles I could be looking for. For instance, I could be looking for vice president of information technology, director of IT, I could be looking for IT directors, and so on. So this is a good way to search for titles that I have maybe missed, but I would prefer to use the role-based titles because I know precisely who I'm talking to. So if I go to job titles here, I can type CTO, 
and it's going to give me a suggestion of Chief Technology Officer. If I'll include it right away, combined with the previous filter, it tells me that there are 9.5 thousand results. So now it's only for Chief Technology Officers, and I can also add CTO, because some people may not have this exactly as a title, but CTO more precisely. So if I add it up, I can see now that I have 11,000 results. If you're familiar with Boolean searches, you can also use them on LinkedIn Sales Navigator, and I have left a link on the description of this video to teach you how to use them to your benefit. In this example, will stick to the filters just as they are, but Boolean searches can help you find a lot more leads in a more qualified way as well. So continuing in the filters, I can choose the seniority level, if whether they're entry level or, or else. Usually CTO, I know that they are already a senior enough, whether they have a certain amount of uh, years in the com company or uh, also in the position that they're in. In terms of geography, I'll select United States and here. What's quite helpful is in all the filters, primarily, you can actually exclude some of them. So for instance, if I target the United States aside from New York, I have nothing against New York. It's just that I have a salesperson, for instance, who works already on New York and I don't want to touch on their market. I can type New York on the filters, so New York, and you can see I can either click on exclude or if I've already selected it, I can pass the mouse on it and click on this, which is going to make sure to exclude it. I always recommend excluding if you have exclusions, just to make sure that you don't target them in your searches. So I'll remove that just for now. And in terms of industry, I can select several ones and I can also exclude some of uh, those that I do not target just to make sure they're not on my search. Right now I'm saying I'm targeting healthcare. So here I have hospitals and healthcare. I can include, and it's gonna trim down the search to 108 results. This is a lot lower than we had just before, but it's also a lot more specific because these are exactly the people I want to target. Now, what I recommend to do is to use what they call the saved search feature. So you can toggle here on this button. What it's going to do is that it's going to save the search so that I don't have to do that every time I connect on LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And it's also going to tell me whenever there are leads that fit exactly the criteria that I selected who appear on this list. This is super helpful for searches that you do over and over again to make sure that you don't have to redo them and especially be triggered whenever there's new ones. I'll show you how it looks like. So if you click on the save searches part here, you can see some of the searches that you've created. This is the new one that I created. You can rename it if you want. And it also tells you what filters you've selected. Here for previous ones, it tells me how many new results there are since the moment I've checked the last time. It's super helpful because as you create multiple searches, it will just work for you in the background. This is a great way to automate your lead generation, be able to identify leads automatically. Another way to do that is also to create a saved list. So here you have a lead list here, and you can see there's a checkbox that I can select. Uh, if I'm interested in particular leads, for instance, I'm interested in this person, I'm like, okay, this is also someone I want to connect with. This one, the number increased here, and I can save it to a list. You can also select all of them, but it's only going to select 25 per page. What I recommend to do is typically to do all pages, even if you have more than uh, 2,000 results, for example, the maximum that LinkedIn is going to display is anyway 2,500 results, even though it tells you there are 60 million. This is just how LinkedIn Sales Navigator is wired. But you'll really benefit from clicking one by onto the pages and selecting all of them to add them to the same list. Let me save them to a list. I'll show you how it works. So create a new list. I'll call it example CTO list. And I can also add a description. So if I create and save, now we have 25 people added to the list. In order to find this list, I can go to leads here and you'll see it's going to be on the top. So as I click on it, it's going to give me information about all the leads I've selected, whether they have changed jobs in the last 90 days, uh, whether they've posted on LinkedIn in the past 30 days, and if we have shared experiences. This is a really helpful way to find reasons to connect with individuals to make sure that you can engage with them on the similar level. So if I select this part here, it's going to tell me who has changed roles in the past 90 days, which is a good indicator of a company changing or, or possibly somebody more willing to change things in a business, which means that they could be interested in my services. You can also imagine that now we've selected only 25 leads, but if you've selected 2,500 leads, for instance, you'd have also a lot more results to trim through. Now, if I click on this part here, I can see who has posted on LinkedIn in the past 30 days. I can also see their profiles, see a bit more in their about section, what their role is, and what they've recently posted on. So if I close this, I can now check also who has a shared experience with me. Shared experience corresponds to maybe sharing a group, whether we've worked in a similar company, or if we have been a colleague at the same time. So if I click on this person here, I can also see what their roles are, 
it tells me here on the top that we have a shared group. I can look at the bottom here and what group we're both in. So I can use that as a way to engage. I can look into this group to see if this person has posted as well and take that as a way to engage. This is a great way to find reasons to engage in a personalized manner with your prospects and hopefully get a positive response. And if you come back to your search, I can show you now other ways to find reasons to engage with your prospect. You can see whether they're following your company right now. You can also see if they have shared experiences, if you have past colleagues, look into whether you have a shared connection, but also some interesting ones here based on their recent activities. So whether they have posted on LinkedIn, I can see here that there are 14 results. I can see if they have changed jobs, but also combine them. So who has changed jobs and also posted recently on LinkedIn. So this is a good way to find maybe people who posted about a new job and so that you can comment on it or use that in your outreach. Heading back to the LinkedIn Sales Navigator homepage, I can now click onto account filters. This corresponds only to filters for companies and not for people. But we can use the account filters to find the right companies we want to target and therefore also the people within those companies. You have filters such as the annual revenue, which is an estimate as it's not a publicly available information, company headcount, headcount growth, headquarter location, the industry, number of followers on LinkedIn, department headcount, account growth, fortune, so whether they are fortune 500 or else, technologies that they are using. Uh, for that's particularly helpful if you're targeting companies that are using a specific technology. You can also see whether they are currently hiring on LinkedIn, which is pretty helpful. If they have recent activities, such as funding events, or if they had a leadership change in the last three months. But also, this is quite helpful because it's new. They have uh, this part that tells you whether you have a first degree connection in a company. So let's imagine I'm looking at companies who are currently hiring on LinkedIn. I want to see who I know in those companies. It tells me right now there are 546 results within those companies from 580,000 in total. So let's do an example search now. I'm looking at companies with between 501 and 1,000 employees in the United States and similar industries I selected before. So that was healthcare. There you go. And I want also to see if they have a department change in terms of engineering, for instance. So here, minus 50. So if they've decreased by 50% or they've increased by 50%. So now I see there, there are 1,000 companies in this list. I can also see whether they are currently hiring. So I can know whether these are companies that are now increasing and looking to grow. And now it tells me that there are 638 results. And similarly to before, I can now also save the search so that whenever there's a company that fits exactly those criteria that appears, I'll be notified by email and I can come back to it in my manage searches or save searches here. I can also select some of the companies here to make sure to add them to a list and go more in detail in what I'm looking for. So I can either select one by one or I can select all of them. There are 638 results and right now I can only select 25 per page. So you have to scroll down and do page by page and always select 25 to add them to the same list. So if I click on save to list, I can create a new list and I'll say US healthcare. For instance, create and save. I'll have to go to the next list, select again, save to list, and I'll select US healthcare. So once you've done that and you selected all of the leads that you have, you can also search for individuals within those companies. To find the right people to target within the companies that you found now, LinkedIn Sales Navigator offers a lot of options to do that. Firstly, you can do it manually, which gives you quite a lot of details by clicking within this company and checking to their profile. There's a lot of information that you can use on their recent alerts, some of their insights, as well as the people who work in those companies. So you can see here, there's a relationship explorer that tells me some of the people I should be targeting. And I can also use filters just to select who I wanna add to my saved lists. I can also look into this relationship map here. I can search by name, but also by title. So if I type here CTO, it'll show me, okay, CTO here. And I click on add. This is adding this person in the relationship map here. I can also add another one just to show an example. Here, I have two individuals. I can map them out, select them. One is below the other one, so I know who's the decision maker and who's the champion. So I can select here, decision maker, champion, evaluator, procurement, influencer, or else. This is quite helpful if you're working on a specific account or doing account-based marketing, because it will help you keep this information on track with Sales Navigator. Lastly, what's quite helpful is you can go down here on the growth insights and it's going to tell you what the total employee count is, the distribution of the headcount by type of department, how many new hires they've had over the past month, if they have job openings, and also if you've selected personas before, you can see also the type of personas that they have so you can know how to target them. 
Lastly, and this is quite helpful too, it gives you some other companies that you could use that may not be under your radar, which are similar to this business here. And I can select quite a few ones just to make sure I can trim through all of them. Another very helpful way to find leads within the company list that you have pre-selected before is to go back to your lead search and import your account list. So because we've saved account list before, we have here this part called account lists, and we have called it US Healthcare. So let me see, US Healthcare, I can include this. Now, within those healthcare companies that I've pre-selected, I can select who I want to be targeting. So as I'm looking for CTOs here, I can see within those companies who is CTO or Chief Technology Officer and target them. It tells me that there are 41 results, and that's super helpful because with just a few filters, I've been able to narrow down who exactly I want to target in terms of people coming first from the companies. Coming back to the initial search that we have done that includes US-based CTOs who work in the healthcare space in companies between 501 and 1,000 employees, it said that I had 108 results. So now if I want to put all this information into a spreadsheet without having to copy paste the information one by one, the first name, last name, the titles, the company names, and so on. And you can imagine that if you have to redo this work, it might be very time consuming. I am using a tool called scalist.com, which is the number one LinkedIn sales navigator extractor. And it, in one click allows me to export all of my searches up to 2,500 results. And will also search for the verified and professional email of my leads. When it finds the email, it actually verifies it to tell me whether it's valid, so that's safe to use or risky, which is basically unverifiable. It comes with a Chrome extension, which I'm gonna show you how it works. So I just have to add to Chrome, add extension, Go back to my sales navigator. When I'll refresh the page, you'll see a button that's going to appear here on the top right hand corner. Export leads. So this is with the Scalist logo. When I click on export leads, and I'll do it now, it's going to export all of the information that I need. So first name, last names, company names, location, industry, and also search for the emails. The extraction is going to start. And I can also rename it if I want. So here, United States Healthcare CTOs. For instance, see there's an extra space here. It will also give me the URL so I can always retrieve it, but I'll pause the video for now and come back when it's done. After a few minutes, Scalist has exported my 108 leads and it returned a total of 86 emails. So 53 of which it said it's valid and 33 of which are risky. So valid emails are emails that are safe to use and risky emails are emails that are unfortunately not verifiable. In the pricing model of Scalist, just so you know, you're only charged for valid emails. So one credit equals one valid email and risky emails are always free. It's super handy because then you're not charged for emails that you're not going to be using. And if I want the phone numbers as well, I can simply click on here, search phones. If I click on all leads, it's going to search for phone numbers for all of my leads. It can search for emails not found. So these are just for leads that I couldn't find emails for. Risky emails, so only for the risky ones, and valid emails, only for the valid ones. I'm going to click on all these and tell you how many phone numbers I find. Once I click on it, it's going to search for the phone numbers, and I'll just return the final number at the end. Perfect. It just told me that it found 51 phone numbers for the 108 leads, including the 53 valid emails as well as 33 risky emails. For information, phone numbers use a different type of credit, which are just phone related. I can now export my entire CSV either with all the leads or just the leads that have valid emails only, but I can also export it into Excel if I don't like to use CSVs. I have already exported my sheet and I can show you how it looks like finally. So I have a list here with LinkedIn profile URLs, sales navigator profile URLs, first name, last names, job titles, company name, industry, company size, the city they're located in, the country, whether they have a LinkedIn premium or not, the website, as well as the email address, the status of this email, and the phone number whenever it's found. I have hidden the column here, so we cannot see it on this video, but you can see that my list has been sorted with lots of valid emails as well as uh, phone numbers. And that's now the list that I can use for any of my outreach, whether that's LinkedIn automation, cold email, as well as cold call. Congratulations for completing this LinkedIn Sales Navigator Lead Generation Masterclass. You now have all the tools to generate leads for your business consistently, whether that's finding the right leads, saving them in your searches, also finding reasons to engage with them to generate a positive response. And lastly, I showed you how to use Scalist so that you can export your searches into a CSV or Excel that includes all of their LinkedIn information, but also their verified professional emails and their phone numbers if you're doing any cold call as well. Good luck with all of this. Happy lead generation and happy scaling.